Yo, what's going on guys? Arax here. Welcome back to another video for Wild Hearts. And today I want to talk a bit more about the game. More specifically, I want to try and give you a sort of game overview. Paint a bigger picture as to some of the stuff you'll get up to. Obviously, at this time, I have not played the whole game. In fact, the build that I played only had a small portion of content, a few monsters to fight, a few weapons to test out. I didn't even get access to the hub town, so there's definitely still stuff that I have not done. But for those of you guys that, of course, have seen lots of hunting gameplay, but maybe haven't had a chance to explore the world, I want to try and give you sort of a bit of picture as to what you'll be doing outside of just hunting. So if you guys do enjoy this, a like would be super appreciated. Comment down below, let me know if you guys have any more questions. And of course, do be sure to keep it locked because we've got plenty more Wild Heart stuff coming your way. Also again, as a reminder, this is still a very early work in progress build. So if you see bugs, you see frame drops, you see other things like that, all of this stuff is being addressed, but it did still give us a good chance to jump into the game and get a feel for how things play. And it does feel great. So to begin with, top level, of course, Wild Hearts is a hunting action game. It's a game in the hunting genre, which means if you guys have played games like these before, the premise is pretty simple. You hunt giant, big ass creatures, you defeat them, you then take parts from them, you use those parts to craft armor and weapons, so you can then go and hunt even bigger, more challenging monsters and repeat the cycle. The process is pretty simple, but again, if you guys have played these kinds of games before, that is what we like. Hunt monsters, make gear, hunt more monsters, make more gear, and this loop makes the world go around. However, there is still more to do. So let's talk about the world of Azuma. This game is not an open world game, so it's not one of those ones where you'll be wandering for hours and hours in random directions, but it is still based in a large map. In my time playing, I got to explore a large portion of the map, but when I actually had a chance to sort of zoom out and see the uh, bigger picture, it definitely wasn't the whole thing. Also keep in mind, I'm unable to show you guys any menus in this footage, so for stuff that is relating to anything that you would typically see in a menu, like a map. Unfortunately, I can't show you. But just take my word for it, it is a pretty big map, I had a chance to wander around, see lots of different areas, and of course from what I got to see on the map screen, there did appear to be much more out there. They've also described an official website and in interviews that the map itself will actually work around four distinct seasons, and those seasons will then change the way that the world looks. Again, we haven't really sort of seen how that works, short of, you know, a few like snowy scenes or things like that in a trailer, so there is still much more to discover. But you do have a large world which is pretty sizable, it does still take a little while to sort of run around areas, hence of course the need for some of the uh, Karakuri to help you navigate. So if you guys wanted a sort of comparison, I guess you could think about maybe like the Guiding Lands in Monster Hunter World, whereby it's a large scale map that you can wander around in different biomes and of course encounter different monsters. And of course, when you do wander around the world, you will see different kimono, they'll just be wandering around, you can battle them. And of course, when you battle them in the open world, there's you know no death limit. Meanwhile, of course, you can then also open up the map, go into missions, and then of course, go on an actual quest to hunt said kimono. Of course, as mentioned, there is also gonna be a hub town. When I was playing through at the very end of my demo, that's basically where you got to the hub town. However, before you were actually able to go in and see, I was greeted by a thank you for playing screen so I still have no idea what that hub town looks like or what you can do within said town but there will be a hub town in game which of course acts as a place to see NPCs do other things like that craft gear and then of course you can then go out of that into the world in order to embark on your quests also worth noting that as you do explore the world, you can do other stuff as well. You can gather materials, you can gather basic stuff, which of course is used to feed into your category crafting. You can also gather other materials, you can mine, collect flowers, collect little uh, creatures, different things like that. And of course, these will feed into crafting your weapons and your gear. In addition to this, whilst exploring the world, this moves on to point number three, and that is the building section. Because while building, of course, factors into your combat, it also factors into the world. See, there are two different types of karakuri. There is basic karakuri, and there are dragon karakuri. The dragon ones are the bigger ones. And as you explore the world, you will encounter these things called dragon wells, these sort of red glowing pillars. Again, can't show you the menu that follows this, but basically when you interact with these, see these as sort of like a building location to a degree, not exactly a location, but by activating these dragon wells, it basically gives you more energy to be able to build bigger structures. Once you've done this, you can then go around the world and you can place things like base camps. You can place towers, which can scan to find other kimono to fight. You can create forges so that you can forge your weapons whenever you want or in whatever location you want. You can build fires, you can sit down and cook food at, build signs to leave messages for players, and even build the zip lines, which you can then place to uh, basically create shortcuts around the world. Effectively, finding these can be important because as you activate more of these, you can build more of these structures. 
But of course, outside of that, the building also factors into your combat. Again, Katakuri is basically the uh, sort of uh, little building blocks you see in game. And at the bottom of the screen, you'll of course have a number of threads available and whenever you build things, it subtracts from these threads. You can of course generate more of these by attacking monsters or of course also mining and sort of gathering resources around the world. You can craft things quickly on a sort of quick select menu where of course you can place down quick blocks, you can place down springs, the sort of fire thing you can dash through to ignite your blade. And of course, once you do discover more Karakuri recipes, you can then of course place down blocks in different permutations to create other devices. The prime example being the bulwark which you then put down during the uh, King Tusk fight in order to stop it from charging at you. So there's lots of things to build as well. In addition to this, of course, the game has a variety of different weapons. Now, again, there will be more than just three. At this current time, I'm only able to speak about the Karakuri Katana, the Bladed Wagasa, which of course the Umbrella, and the Bow. But of course, if you've seen the most recent trailer, you will know that we've seen a fourth weapon, and there are also more weapons still. But for the time being, I cannot talk about those just yet, so you'll have to wait and see. Point is, there are plenty of different weapons, all of which have their own unique movesets and of course diverse playstyles. The Katakuri Katana is a very good beginner focused weapon that is basically a blade that also turns into a chain whip. The Bladed Wagasa is a very awesome aerial aggressive umbrella which basically allows you to power up through continuous attacks and also attack from the air. And of course the bow is a weapon that allows you to rain down arrows from above or pile arrows into enemies which you can then fire later on to detonate. Basically, there are lots of awesome weapons. And again, more still to see. However, in addition to this, one of the main things about the game, of course, are the Kemono. This is the name of the monsters you'll be fighting in the game. These are these awesome nature-infused beasts. They come in a variety of different sizes, small monsters, medium-sized monsters, large, gigantic ones. Visually, they look very cool. And of course, when they go into rage mode, they also uh, sort of change the environment around them. They are definitely very cool. But again, we've only seen a few so far. Outside of that, there is also crafting. Again, I can't show you menus right now, so this much you're just gonna have to use your imagination, but you can go to the forge and you can use materials to craft armor sets and also weapons. Armor will of course embody the look of the kimono, and while of course I haven't seen this in action just yet, there does appear to be a way to basically craft your gear in such a way where you can lean more towards making it look like a kimono or more towards the human side depending on your visual preference. Armor sets of course have their own bonuses and skills that will of course help you in battle. And weapons, when you kind of craft them, you start at the beginning of the tree. And then of course, as you fight more kimono, you're able to upgrade them through the tree. And of course, doing so will change the way they look, but it will also give them new skills. Skills can also be inherited. So when you upgrade your weapon, you can actually carry skills over from one weapon to another, or at least one upgrade to another. And then finally, multiplayer, of course, this is the important part of the game. You can play solo if you want to, but you can also play multiplayer. The game does have full crossplay, but when you're exploring the world, you'll see these little sort of gates, which of course you can interact with in order to sort of seamlessly load into someone else's session, or you can sit at the campfire and you can create online lobbies where you can then invite your friends or just sort of set up lobbies that are open so people can join you if they're looking for hunts. But for the time being, that is a quick overview of some of the other things in the game that you may not have seen just yet. Again, there is plenty more still to discover, plenty of things I have yet to see myself, but hopefully this has given you a better picture as to some of the other stuff you can get up to in the world. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this. If you missed some of the recent videos, be sure to check out one of these ones and keep it locked for plenty more.